spanning the generations. This year, this race captured the imagination before the green flag had even flown. Crowds that have not been seen, well, not even before COVID and the interruption there, to be honest. The grid was packed, the campsites were packed, the grandstands were full to overflowing. Thousands of people walking up on the day, on Saturday. Was it the Ferrari effect? We know what it can do in other races around the world. It's everybody's at least second favorite brand that been involved in motorsport for such a long time and built their reputation upon it. Well, if it was that, it works. If it was the fact that it was one of the strongest GT3 fields that has ever been assembled here on the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Over 30 cars in the top class. The promise of decent weather over an Ascension Day holiday at weekends. Well, you can't actually factor that in because we would never have put any money on that earlier in the week. Whatever the reason was, the crowds came from here in Germany and from much further afield. You tuned in in your tens of thousands to the free uninterrupted world feed for the build-up, the action, the atmosphere, and enthralling two qualifying sessions, top qualifying sessions on Friday that saw ultimate drama, incident and accident. And as the cars set off on their formation lap, the fans, as tradition dictates, out on the side of the track. Green is the new hell. It's the old hell as well. It's been the green hell for a very, very long time. The Dacia Logan fan favourite 118 in the SP3 category up against the revised, rebuilt Manta that was a burnt out hulk at this time last year. Mercedes Benz locking out the front row and following the Audi pace car to the line. Everything possible as the red lights went to green. And from the very moment that that happened, the intent was clear from David Pittard drafting behind the green hell AMG and then pulling out to make it three across the track. Lamborghini, AMG and Ferrari squeezing through the first corner. And that really set the tone right there that Ferrari weren't here and Frigadelli weren't here just to make up the numbers. They were playing at the front of the field with the big names and they're to be taken seriously. The early part of the race saw some frenetic battling up to second on the long drag down the Dottinger Hur, the Ferrari slippery through the air and going past the special paintwork, and it was paintwork, on the AMG of Raffaele Marcello. For a while, it was AMG and AMG. They gave us some great running. The two, the three, and the four AMGs at various stages. Johnny Palmer called them the traffic light AMGs. Red, yellow, and green. That's going to stick as well. Not really Audi's weekend. The cars look good, particularly in parts, but they just missed the setup window, maybe. But it was Porsche who will be most disappointed. A brand new GT3 car this year with the arrival of the 992 body shape to GT3 International Racing. It has to be said that early on, we were worried, JP, about trying to build up the Ferrari too far. How can, can this last? Will it last? Is this flattering to deceive us? Because in everybody's mind, there was still that thought of the reliability and the unfamiliarity of the team with the car, albeit a lot of Rinaldi influence, but the car just kept pounding round. It did. It's... Uh, and never really led up the pace either. So to be able to continue to push on quick lap after quick lap, 
and avoid any drama. Sometimes it's not of your own making, but the, the one bit, the one big hiccup was that puncture six laps in to a Nicky Katzberg stint, but incredibly, it happened in the penultimate sector. So he only lost about a minute and was able to pit after six laps and they just swallowed that into an otherwise perfect pit stopping system. Lamborghini also had their dramas though. That was another quick Italian car, but yeah. fortunately for the Evo 2 car, that also suffered from a puncture and again, didn't quite have the pace all the way around the track like the 296 did. Local teams filling the local radio and TV and press, but the 911 Manti M Air Porsche was a little out of sorts. All the Porsches were, they had a lot to deal with, with changes in BOP. And Kevin Estra going into the wall was just an absolute perfect representation of how their week had been going. The traffic lights were turned to amber for a while with the number four car leading out. BMW junior team, they had their moment in the sun as well, right up to, in fact, sunset. That uh, BMW junior team, the Shell Helix car, had run well and they had their plan for overnight to leave Neil Verhagen to get a good rest and bring him back fresh in the morning. Ultimately, the car didn't get to that point in the race in a state that was competitive. Similar to what happened to uh, one of the Manfilter Mercedes a couple of years ago when an innocuous incident, a spin, as it turned out to be for Dan Harper as a result of a puncture, then did further damage, spinning into the gravel trap at Brunchen. I'm not sure Dan Harper knew entirely all about that, but it wasn't until Max Hesse took over about 30 minutes later when something far more significant broke on the BMW. And I remember Maxi Gertz taking charge of a Mercedes probably three or four years ago, and again, 45 minutes into his stint, a steering arm pitched him, broke, and pitched him into yeah. the wall. Not his fault at all. Sometimes you have to pay attention to what might have happened to a racing car in the last couple of hours, because it won't bite until much later on. Sunset uh, just before 20 minutes past nine in the evening, and that was when it looked like fate had bitten the Frigatelli Ferrari. Bad luck for the puncture, w weren't unique in, in that. Good luck that it was so close to the pit lane. And their strategy, which had been metac meticulously planned, well, it was within the bounds of what they had set themselves. The night plays tricks on the Nordschleifer. The onboard images spectacular, the speeds unwavering. In fact, the fastest lap of the race was set in the darkness hours, but not everyone was 100% accurate or 100% in concentration. And as we always know here, small, small mistakes, big consequences. The party continues, as it always does here, in good spirits. And all the way through the race, we were there or thereabouts on record distance pace. It needed to be 6.66 laps per hour and at the front of the field Maro Engel making a tiny mistake going past the Songfi Cayman right rear suspension issue changed new shocker went on there but not too long afterwards the team withdrew the car for safety reasons on into the night the Frigadelli number 30 went on into the night yeah, nothing really changed. I mean, if anything, the Ferrari got faster and uh, just mm. after daybreak, the 20 machine really turned up the wick and managed the fastest lap of the race. They cycled through their drivers. I'm not sure, it wasn't until the very end when they just changed the rotation Correct. very slightly. Missed that Felipe Fernandez Laza as the recently moved to gold driver. But David Pittard quite clearly given a massive responsibility this weekend to qualify the car, to start the car, and reserved as the final driver in the race. Audi's fell by the rear side too, went in an accident where there'd been some fluid put down on the, on the Grand Prix track. Uh, I have to say, Earl Bamber's uh, double in the middle of the night was absolutely outstanding. That was when the lead stretched. Uh, they used the Kiwi very, very 
well indeed and made sure that the advantage that they felt that he could give them was played at the right time. All part of the strategy, of course. Who's in the car we're racing? Can we put a driver in to put pressure on them? Earl Bamba pulled out something like uh, a minute and a half, almost to two minutes in those double stints that he did just over two and a half hours. But even at daybreak, the race had plenty of action still to come. A little bit of fog, but nothing like the intervention that we've had from weather down through the years. Was this the perfect race in terms of weather at the Nordschleife? Must have been close to it. Relatively small attrition race in the first half of rate in the first half of the race. Yes, people had had problems, but there were lots of cars still circulating, which meant the traffic was always going to be an issue. It can help you, it can hinder you, it giveth, it taketh away. By the time we got into the last third of the race, it became clear that the battle was between a couple of Ferraris in the top six, some BMWs and a couple of AMGs. And really that distilled down Johnny Palmer to the battle that went all the way at the end between the number 30 Ferrari and the number 98 BMW. David Pittard was psyched up, fist pumping his crew to take it to the end. Klaus Abelin couldn't take the stress of watching the end of the race. I think a brilliantly managed race as well as anything else from Frigatelli, from Ferrari and from Rinaldi. They had a heart, an eye to the chequered flag from something like six hours out, as so many of the really professional teams do. And this was confirmation as the Ferrari came out of Hohenrein, Walter Hornung, the uh, race director, greeting a brand new winner in this race for Klaus Avalan, who has run cars in this 24 hours, uh, year after year after year, but changed manufacturer, a big headline as he did. But what about the celebrations? Finally, he manages to win this wonderful event. Forza Ferrari, finally it's Frigatelli. Absolutely Avalon. A win on the Nordschleife for the man from round the corner and up the hill. The 24 hours for 2023. The Total Energy ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring stays close to home with Frigatelli winning the big race over the Ascension Day weekend. Where to next for that team? Anywhere they want right now.